to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. On 26 July 1902, an administrative order was passed in the princely state of Kolhapur that sent shockwaves across British India. The order, published in the Kolhapur State Gazetteer, read, His Highness is pleased to direct that from the date of this order, 50% of the vacancies that may occur shall be fixed by recruits from among the backward classes in all offices in which the proportion of officers of the backward classes is at present less than 50%, the next appointment shall be given to a member of those classes. These were the first caste-based job reservations implemented in India and were an important milestone in the history of modern India. And the man behind this revolutionary order was Kolhapur's visionary ruler Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj a direct descendant of the famous Maratha ruler Chhatrapati Shivaji. From the 1860s onwards, a wave of social reform began to spread across India. A number of social reformers such as Keshup Chandra Sen, Pandita Ramabai, Jyotiba Phule, Govind Mahadev Ranade and many others were campaigning for the abolition of untouchability and child marriage for women's education and for other progressive issues. Organizations such as the Brahmo Samaj, Prarthana Samaj and the Satyashodak Samaj were campaigning for equality. The idea of caste-based reservations had first been suggested by the noted social reformer Jyotiba Phule in 1882. Phule, along with his wife Savitri Bai, had started the first girls' school in India and had actively campaigned against infanticide and in favour of widow remarriage. In 1882, Lord Ripon, the then Viceroy of India, had established a commission for reforms in Indian education led by William Wilson Hunter. It was popularly known as the Hunter Commission. It was in his deposition to the Hunter Commission that Foulet argued for proportionate representation for backward castes in jobs and education. But his idea would only come to fruition 20 years later in the princely state of Kolhapur. Chhatrapati Shahu, who had ascended the throne in 1894, was an extremely enlightened man. The young ruler had received a liberal education travelled extensively and was deeply moved by the caste exploitation and the oppression of common folk all over India and in his princely state in particular. All this contributed to him ushering in a new era in Kolhapur's and perhaps India's history. But the Chhatrapati's policy faced stiff opposition even from leaders like Lokmanya Tilak and it was only through the support of the government of Bombay that he could proceed with his plan. Chhatrapati Shahu died in 1922, but the idea of reservations quickly began to gain popularity across India. On 20th November 1916, the South Indian People's Association was formed in Madras. It later evolved into the Justice Party. A month later, the association published its famous non-Brahmin manifesto which argued for reservation in government jobs and education for non-Brahmin castes. In 1921, the Justice Party's government in Madras province passed the Communal Government Order No. 613 reserving 44% jobs for non-Brahmins. It was the first reservation policy to be implemented by a popularly elected government. In 1932, the British Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald announced separate electorates for the backward castes referred to as the depressed classes 
as well as for religious minorities. In protest, Mahatma Gandhi went on an indefinite hunger strike. According to a negotiated settlement signed by Dr. Ambedkar and Madan Mohan Malviya, known as the Pune Pact, the separate electorate for the depressed classes was scrapped in return for reservation of a certain proportion of seats. Following India's independence in 1947, the Constituent Assembly of a newly independent India carried forward the legacy of social justice. The man who started it all, Chhatrapati Shahu of Kolhapur, is still remembered today as Rajashri or the Saint King by millions whose lives he transformed.